Natural. Natural. Mm. Natural. All natural. Leech therapy, which could be causing problems. Other things that can cause problems, headers, you know, when you're playing soccer, Mm -hmm. doing a header. I mean, it's the header in soccer is part of the game, is it not? We grew up playing soccer. The balls come in at the scrum and you jump up to use your head to get the ball out of the group, to get that benefit. Well, we have a concern with headers because similar to as in football, when football players collide with one another, which can cause concussions, so can headers. Headers can cause brain damage and the and concussion. And so the question is, how do we find the people who are most susceptible to damage to the brain? How do we protect them from damage to the brain? One thing is getting young players to stop doing headers entirely. But a new study reported July 31st in radiology suggests that females, women who play soccer, have worse symptoms after brain injuries than male athletes. But they did a comparison of post-header brains that this hasn't been done before. Researcher from Albert Einstein College in New York from 2013 to 2016 recruited 98 soccer players from amateur teams, including colleges, comparing male and female players who had just headed the ball a similar number of times over the past year. For men, that was about 487 headers, and women had a median of 469 headers. However, women's brains had more spots of microscopic damage. The MRI scanning they used, which is diffusion tensor imaging, looks at white matter changes in the brain, which are the axons that send uh, messages from place to place in the brain. Seems as though those were damaged. The altered spots indicated possible damage to nerve cell axons and myelin. And in men, only three brain regions showed potential damage associated with the heading frequency versus eight in women. These weren't enough to cause symptoms, behavioral symptoms, but the a year of heading the soccer ball for over 400 times caused changes in the brain, more changes in women than in men, and repeated blows over more years could contribute to chronic traumatic brain injury, which can lead to problems like encephalopathies and behavioral changes like memory loss and other behavioral damage. So the question is, why are women more at risk? And previous studies have suggested that it may have to do with hormonal changes and genetics. I know for a fact that there is one previous study that found that behavioral changes were greater, or at least the inflammation was greater after damage to the brain during certain parts of the menstrual cycle. So there are certain periods in which the brain is more protected than others, it seems, in the female brain, although this does still need to be supported more fully. This is a trip. I think, you know, the male-female thing, uh, some part of me just says that that angle, there's just someone out there who's going to, like, use that for evil purposes. I'm more concerned about just the fundamental idea. And what occurs to me is, like, as a society, we become more, like, intense. And this is an old story about the training, the answer, we got to train our kids young, We got to have formalized training and the level of intensity because that's a lot. I mean, 500 blows to the head is too much for a kid. For a kid. And, and, you know, they're looking at some of the people that were in this study were college level, which is still pretty young. Yeah, still young. They're still in college. Yeah, That's like playing this whole thing, football in college. I mean, it's like all these things. How can you? uh, uh, That's another story, but. It's, it's very disconcerting. Having two young boys, I've been like, oh, you can't play football because I'm sorry, but there's soccer, there's soccer, there's soccer. Now, I'm wondering. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there's the occasional blow to the head. We can get through it, but this repeated yeah. injury is what really concerns people these days, this kind yeah. of ongoing inflammation that doesn't really have the chance to heal itself before the next impact. And then you know, we're not woodpeckers. We don't have padding (laughs) in our brains. We don't have special anatomical adaptations for collisions with our head. We don't have giant skulls. We don't have antlers. Not to mention, (laughs) you get a bunch of kids playing together. That's one kind of header. And then you get kids playing on a field and the ball's crossing 
hundreds, you know, it's traveling a long way. That gains a lot of momentum, a lot of gravity on there. That's a